So, when you first open up ZBrush, uh, this is the view that you will be greeted by. So, we've got this light box here. This is called the light box. And we want to close it. So, here we can see this light box button. And let's click it. It will hide the light box. If we click it again, it will be opened. We can also use the comma key to close it or open it. And there is even this little hide button here with which you can close it. But personally, I never use it. I just use this light box button here. I don't even use the comma key, but but just so that you know that there is such a hot key for it. Anyway, so now we got this empty canvas here. Or document, as it is also known as. And uh, it would be nice if it would be full size. Now it's got this gray border around it. And in order to make the document bigger, we go here into the menu bar. There's this document drop menu. And then in here, there's this little little menu or palette uh, that has these buttons called half size and double size. And let's hit the double size. So now we have it. There is also the possibility to uh, manually adjust the size of the document. And in addition to this, there is also a different menu from which we can um, adjust the document size. So let's, let's hit the half size again. So we have it as it was in the beginning. And then we can go here into Preferences. And there is this Initialize ZBrush button here. Uh, what Initializing ZBrush does is that it, it resizes the document, but it also erases um, all sorts of information that we have uh, saved into the UI or whatever. So if there is something something funny going on in the program and you know you don't know how to fix it, just go here into the preferences and hit initialize ZBrush. So let's click on that. So it will delete all customized tools, materials and lights and and document data as well. So Let's see. And there we have it. So now it is full size again. So you don't have to go go through this uh, to, to make this. You can just go into document and hit the double size. <clears throat> but just so, so that you know, if there is something funny going on, the UI, if, it, if, it, if the UI has been slightly changed or something, just go into Preferences and hit in Initialize ZBrush. So, now we got this empty canvas. It's full size, we are happy with it, we want to get going with the sculpting. So, now as we draw onto the canvas, uh, we're getting something there, but uh, it's not really anything sculptable. So what's going on? Well, this is uh, the 2.5D mode. We are currently in the 2.5D mode, which is intended for 2.5D painting. So we have to empty the canvas. And in order to do that, we hit uh, Ctrl and N or Command and N on Mac. So, Command and N 
to empty the canvas, like so. So, in order to get uh, an actual 3D object into the viewport or into the canvas, we go here in this tool palette. We can shrink the tool palette or, or hide it and open it. And then there is this, this icon here, current tool icon. We click on it to reveal this, this menu with all sorts of interesting things. And our main interest is this 3D meshes uh, portion here. So these are the 3, 3D objects or 3D primitives as they are also known. I will later on explain what, what that means. But anyway, let's pick for example this cube 3D at first. So, as you can see, uh, the tool palette now has this cube 3D here and also this current icon, uh, uh, sorry, current tool icon uh, changed. So, at first it was this simple brush, then we picked the cube 3D. The cube 3D was added here, so we can switch to it uh, from here. So let's draw a cube into here. So there we have it, but uh, can we do anything to it? Nope, not just yet. And that's because we are still in the two and a half D mode. So if I change back into this simple brush that we originally had, you can see that it's it's still in the two and a half D painting painting mode. So let's clear the canvas yet again. So Command and N. And now let's draw a cube once more in here. Okay. So since we're in the two and a half D mode now. Ooh, how can we get into the 3D mode? Well, that's where this edit button here comes to place. We click on the edit button and now we see that we get these, these border lines here. And there is also this head or bust icon in there. And now if we uh, press down our stylus or pen and draw on the onto empty space around the object, you can see that we can rotate our cube. And we can also see that the head is uh, turning uh, based on the orientation of the object. Okay, so now we are in 3D mode. So edit button here. But there is still one thing to know and it is the fact that if we go here into this brush menu, so here is this brush icon, hit on it and pick the standard brush and then try to do something to the cube. We can see that ZBrush will inform us that to enable sculpting, please convert this 3D primitive to a polymesh 3D by pressing the Make Polymesh 3D button in the tool palette. So, that's this one here. So, as I was explaining, uh, <coughs> what we get here, these are only uh, uh, primitives, 3D primitives. And now after we uh, had this primitive cube 3D and we hit the make polymesh 3D uh, button here, it created uh, yet again a new object into here or a new tool into here in this tool palette. So these are called tools. So it's called PM3D because 
make polymesh 3d it's a polymesh 3d cube 3d object now and now that it's a polymesh 3d object now we can actually draw and sculpt and uh, as you can see there is this rotate button here so you can also rotate the view from there and then there is this zoom button you can also zoom uh, with uh, by pressing the alt key down and then well once you press the alt key down you can first move the object around and then when you when you release the alt key while still pressing your stylus or pen down and then move your uh, your pointer up and down then you can zoom in and out so it's a bit uh, wonky at first but you'll get used to it so rotate just draw an empty space on the canvas then in order to move the object you just press alt down and and draw an empty space and then if you want to zoom in and out you just release the alt and and move the stylus or the pointer uh, up and down and yes the same things can be done from these these little buttons there anyway so so this is the polymesh 3d and underneath this uh, move zoom and rotate buttons there is this polyframe button and when we hit it we can actually see the the vertices edges and polygons that compose the mesh and if we go into this primitive cube here we can see it so what is the actual difference between a primitive cube 3d and polymesh 3d cube 3d well the difference is that uh, a primitive object you can initialize much like in for example maya uh, you can initialize the object you can uh, uh, add or reduce divisions to it and and so forth and that's exactly how this cube 3d primitive object also uh, can be manipulated so here is this initialize tab that you can open and it reveals these all sorts of sliders let's check for example these h divide and b divide sliders so as you can see we can add divisions horizontally uh, and vertically we can twist it we can add sides we can uh, manipulate the size on, on the different axes and so forth so that that's that's how how this initializing works um, but we'll we'll take a closer look at that later on so now let's just go into this 
this uh, polymesh 3D object that we have created. And uh, the next thing that I would show to you is um, this magic button called control on or well control on PC and command on Mac so um, if you hover over any of these icons or buttons in the UI and you want to know something more about the function of the button or the icon the feature you just hover your pointer over over one of them and press down command and ZBrush will tell you what they are so much easier than than googling you will even get these nice images occasionally Okay, but that's that's the first part now. So what you need to remember from this is uh, first of all you close the light box from here and document document drop menu and from there you find this double size and if you're encountering problems with the UI you can initialize uh, everything in the program from here preferences and initialize ZBrush and then once we have drawn uh, any of the 3D primitives on the canvas you hit the edit in order to get to rotate it or initialize it and when you have to or want to move on into actually sculpting uh, the object then you hit this make polymesh 3d and that's that's where we stop now